The Economic and Financial Crime Commission has accused commercial banks of colluding with government officials to reloot, recover loot of the late dictator Sani Abacha. In December 2017, the federal government signed a memorandum of understanding with Switzerland on the return and monitoring of the $322 million Abacha loot. The proceeds were intended for conditional cash transfer under the Social Investment Program, which began in December 2016 under ex-president Muhammad Buhari's administration. The looted funds were meant to provide 5,000 naira monthly spent to the most vulnerable Nigerian across the country. However, on Sunday, spokesperson to the EFCC, Daily Oliwale, in a statement said that the anti-graph agency opened investigation into other alleged financial malpractice from the ministry involving the COVID-19 funds and the World Bank Assistant Loan coordinated by the Humanitarian Ministry to assist poor Nigerians. The EFCC said, discrete investigation by the EFCC have opened up fraudulent dealings involving COVID-19 funds. The World Bank Loan, Abacha Recover Loan, released to the ministry by the federal government to execute its poverty alleviation mandate. Investigations have also linked several interdicted and suspended officials of the ministry to the alleged financial malfeasance. It is intrusive to stress that the commission investigation are not about individuals. The EFC is investigating a system and intricate web of fraudulent practices. Banks involved in the alleged fraud are being investigated. Managing directors of the indicted banks have made useful statements to investigators digging into the infra infractions. Those found wanting will be prosecuted accordingly. Additionally, the EFC has not cleared anyone allegedly involved in the fraud. Investigations are ongoing and advancing steadily. The public is enjoyed to ignore any claim to the contrary. The commission also revealed that $32.7 billion and $455,000 has been recovered from both past and suspended officials of the humanitarian ministry. In order that the commission initiated investigation into the affairs of the humanitarian ministries, inviting former minister Sadia Umar Farouk and assessor Betar Edu suspended by President Bola Metinibu in January for alleged abuse of office. Many of you will be hearing about Abacha Loot, Abacha Loot, but many of you may not know what it's all about. L let me give you a background history about the Abacha Loot. The phrase Abacha Loot entered into a global anti corruption lexicon in the post military rule in 1999, and it is used to describe the recovery of huge funds in foreign currencies stolen by family members and associates of the late General Sani Abacha, who was Nigeria's military head of state from 1993 to 1998. At the time, Nigeria was excommunicated from the Committee of Nations, including the Commonwealth, because the military usurped powers from democratically elected regimes since 1984. Since then, there had been one military coup after another in such situations that depicted political instability. Nigeria was isolated like any paria state, and the military junta was scorned by many world leaders. The scandalous looting of Nigeria's strategy took place under that reign of terror. Abacha loot is in reference to funds now being recovered. Between $4 billion and $5 billion is suspected to have been shipped out of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, over the five-year period Abacha ruled Nigeria. With record brutality, human rights abuses, and clamped down on the press, so far, about $3.4 billion has been recovered from several European countries, which serve as a safe haven for illicit funds. The letter of the funds recovered was being returned to Nigeria on August 23, 2022, as the Nigerian government signed an agreement with the United States for the reparation of $23 million recovered from banks' accounts maintained by the Abacha clan in America. During the Abacha rule, it was believed that police intelligence had monitored how funds were being moved out of the CBN by its associates. Therefore, upon his demise in 1998, Abacha successor General Abdul Salam Abubakar set up a special investigation panel SIP, headed by the deputy commissioner of police peter ghana of the special fraud unit of the nigerian police to probe the allegation the probe revealed how close associates of abacha and his children connived to move funds in hundreds of dollars and british pounds from the cbn in fraudulent transactions among them the debt buyback in the name of ajokuta steel company in kogi state this discovery made the Abdul Salam regime to enact a forfeiture of assets, EDC, certain persons, degree number 53 of May 26, 1999. 
A book on recovery of stolen phones in which the Abacha case study was mentioned says this degree ordered the return to the Federal Republic of Nigeria of real property and movable assets as well as cash that had been acquired and held illegally by General Sani Abacha. Certain members of his government, notably Ismail Guazo, National Security Advisor, Anthony A. Ani, Minister of Finance, and Bashar Dahitu, Minister of Power and Stell. Certain members of his family, notably Mohamed Sani Abacha, General Sani Abacha's elder son, and the latter's brother, Abdul Kadri Abacha, and other third parties, Abu Bakar Buguda and Abdulaziz Arisokola Aloy. The reports of the SIF pointed to the fact that some looted phone had been moved to Switzerland. Therefore, when Olushego Obasanjo was sworn in in 1999, he set in motion the process of tracing those funds. The government contacted Swiss lawyer Erico Monfrini to take on the tax of combing banks in European countries for funds which may have been stashed there by the military dictator's associate. As Mofrini set in motion the legal process in Switzerland, he stumbled upon millions and several millions of dollars linked to the Abacha syndicate, with a particular bank having opened some 130 bank accounts for the fraudsters. This move yielded great results. At the end of December 1999, a total of $645 million were frozen in Switzerland by the examining magistrate. In order to repatriate the funds to Nigeria, a lawsuit was instituted by the government against the owners of the money. The outcome was that the Geneva Examine Magistrate indicted Mohamed Abacha and Abu Bakr Bukuda of fraud, unfaithful management, participation in a criminal organization, and money laundering. Respectively, on 26 May 2000 in Lagos and on 26 April 2000 in Swiss Embassy in London, Abu Bakr Bagudu was the governor of Kebi State and a key leader of the ruling All Progressive Congress APC and he is the current Minister of Budget and Planning in Nigeria. Imagine the kind of criminality we are running in this country. On his part, Mohamed Abacha had won the People's Democratic Party PDP primary election to contest for the governorship election in Kanu State, one of the commercial centers in Nigeria. Since 2011, Mohamed Abacha had been a political asset of President Muhammad Buhari in the Congress for Progressive Change. The success recorded in Switzerland opened the gates for the recovery of funds stolen and lodged in bank accounts in other European countries. Further investigation in Europe revealed that the Abacha clan had deposited stolen funds in Luxembourg, the UK, Liechtenstein, Jesse, Germany, Austria, the Bahamas, the Belgium, the Cayman Islands, France. Kenya and the United States. In each of these countries, members of Abacha family and their foreign collaborators faced legal action, bordering around fraud, inflated contracts, forgeries, bribery, and related offenses. In each case, they were found guilty and caught insisted that the funds stashed in their banks be repatriated to Nigeria. The victory was achieved through mutual cooperation of prosecutors, examining magistrates and police in several jurisdictions. For about 20 years, Swiss lawyer Enrico Monfrini, working with other legal luminaries in countries where stolen funds were lodged, worked tutelously through narrow and thorny legal procedures to convince judge that funds held by the Abacha family in many accounts were proceeds of corruption. Some of the funds recovered so far include the following. Countries that have cooperated with Nigeria in our bid to recover Abacha loot have attached some conditions to release specifically insisted that they must be applied to major capital projects. Some were to be used to help finance the construction of the Second Niger Bridge, the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, and the Abuja Kanu Road. Others were meant for humanitarian projects. The degree to which these projects are executed with transparency and accountability is yet to be seen. Worst it is fair that the kind of looting that took place under the Abacha regime where the CBN was compelled to release undeserved funds in the name of the president may not have ended. The fact that an accountant general of the Federation AGF, Ahmed Idris, who should secure Nigerians receipt, was being investigated by the Economic and Financial Crime Commission EFCC is a pointer to the fear that Abacha loot may be a tip of the iceberg. If and when the suspected rot in the Buhari admission is exposed at the expiration of his tenure. The conditions attached by the countries before releasing the stolen phone was that these funds should be used for capital projects like building the second Niger Bridge, alleviating poverty. It is important to see how other countries meant well for Nigerians 
but the Nigerian government does not care about Nigerians. They set up the humanitarian ministry led by Sadia Umar Farouk. They wanted to alleviate poverty by transferring 5,000 naira to poor families in Nigeria. Sadia Umar Farouk was fingered in a 37 billion naira fraud. Betaridu was indicted for 3 billion naira fraud in just few months in office. Over 100 million Nigerians are caught in the web of poverty. Infrastructure is in promoters. Currently, the economic is in the wood. Abubakar Bugoda, who helped Abacha loot these forms, became the governor of Kogi State and the current minister of budget and planning under Tinubu government. One Gibel Chogri, who also helped Abacha loot the fund and it was meant to pay over 300 million naira to the Nigeria government, is currently Tinubu confident and his company is executing the Lagos Calabar coastal. Fellow Nigerians, at what point are we going to get out of this web of criminality? Let me hear your thought. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, drop your comment in the comment box and also share this video.